So maybe some of you don't know, but in 2023, the Centers for Spiritual Living global theme is about living out loud. And all of March, we've been talking about cultivating authenticity. And today's topic is boundaries build bridges. So that's what we get to talk about today. Boundaries build bridges. And cultivating, so cultivating authenticity is not about becoming something other than who you are, but it's about letting go of the thought processes, attitudes, and actions that might be blocking us from standing in our personal truth and power. By taking on the practice of cultivating authenticity, we can develop the courage to be vulnerable and to stand in our truth and power. So what does it mean when we're talking about boundaries? Nancy Levin, in her book, Setting Boundaries Will Set You Free, defines boundaries as this, a limit that you set to define what you will or will not do or what you will or will not accept or tolerate from others. If we desire to express ourselves authentically, then it is up to us to learn what our boundaries are and then to share them with others. Boundaries are where we end and the other begins. Boundaries are the container in which our authentic self resides. So while physical boundaries such as walls can be a boundary, we also have emotional boundaries, personal space boundaries, etc. And when we share our boundaries, instead of building a wall, we actually are creating a clear path for people to connect with us. In this way, boundaries build bridges. So communicating boundaries may be new to some of us, especially if we have been taught to put others' needs above our own and place ourselves second to theirs. Well, speaking from personal experience, <laughs> when I placed others' needs above my own, I created an experience of anger, resentment, and even depression for myself, so I cannot recommend it. <laughs> In fact, I highly recommend, don't do it. <laughs> In Wikipedia, um, author Nina Brown proposed that there's four boundary types. The first one is a person that has soft boundaries. A person with soft boundaries merges with other people's boundaries. Someone with a soft boundary can be easily a victim of psychological manipulation. The second one she proposes is called spongy boundaries. A person with spongy boundaries is like a combination of having soft and rigid boundaries. They permit less emotional contagion than soft boundaries, but more than those with rigid. People with spongy boundaries are unsure of what to let in and what to keep out. Rigid boundaries. A person with rigid boundaries is closed or walled off, so nobody can get close either physically or emotionally. This is often in the case of someone who has been a victim. That could be from physical, emotional, psychological, or sex sexual abuse. Rigid boundaries can be selective, which depend on time, place, or circumstances, and are usually based on bad previous experiences in a similar situation. And then the fourth one is flexible boundaries. Similar to spongy, rigid boundaries, but the person exercises more control. The person decides what to let in and what to keep out, is resistant to emotional contagion and psychological manipulation, and is difficult to exploit. So those are some boundary types to think about. So here's something. 
Imagine if we're living like we have a lack of boundaries. We can unconsciously tell others that there is nothing of ours that we hold sacred. We can feel that we exist for their use and all is for the taking. When we do not let others know what our limits are, we set ourselves up for a whole set of emotions, including resentment, betrayal, and anger. Here's a quote from Bre Brene Brown's The Gift of Imperfection, where she says, when we fail to set boundaries and hold people accountable, we feel used and mistreated. This is why sometimes we attack others for who they are, which is far more hurtful than addressing a behavior or a choice. So boundaries are not something that we have to make up. They're something that we need to uncover within ourselves. They're there, and we need to discover what they are. In order for boundaries to build bridges, we need to share our boundaries with others because they can't read our minds. And people don't have all the same boundaries. So we need to learn what they are, maybe ask them. We need to share our boundaries so people will know what our boundaries are. What works for one person may not work for another person. So sharing our boundaries with others gives us an opportunity to practice courage and to be vulnerable. It is an authentic expression because we're sharing who we are rather than who we are not. And it gives others that clear path to connect with us. So taking time to be familiar with your limits, those things you're unwilling to negotiate about, is another method of self-discovery. Once you know what does and doesn't work for you, then you can communicate them with others. Communicating our, our boundaries may feel difficult and scary at first, but like any skill, it gets easier the more we do it. Sometimes we may choose to not share boundaries because of a fear that comes from a sense maybe of unworthiness or somehow we do not deserve the space that we need, that we require. This fear can keep us quiet even if we're feeling like a doormat. So I'll share um, a circumstance that occurred a few years past. And this topic about sharing boundaries has been, um, I think, my growing edge for maybe the last 10 years. I, I wasn't raised to learn how to share boundaries, so I had to discover this journey on my own, which many of us do. But um, I was having um, an experience with a friend of mine that I noticed kept occurring, and it just really didn't feel good to me at all. And so I was like, it was causing problem for me, and I imagine the other person may have felt it too, but it was causing problems for me in having a, an, an experience of friendship that felt good and harmonious to me. And so I needed to say something, speak up. I didn't know how. I mean, I was afraid. I was afraid that if I shared a boundary that this wasn't working and what I needed that I might lose the friendship. So that might happen with you sometimes. It took a, a while, but finally I brought it up. When I finally did, what occurred for me is I felt empowered. I felt empowered and instead of losing a friendship, I felt like I had gained respect from my friend for speaking up. And it created this experience of us getting to move forward in a better relationship. So even though we may want to avoid sharing our boundaries, <laughs> it may feel easier, but there are consequences once boundaries have been crossed and we don't say something. There's the natural reaction to push back, and that comes with many other emotions, so it can create issues with each other. So. Instead of an avoidance, I invite us to practice courage and to actually communicate with each other. Imagine that. <laughs> Sometimes when we share our boundaries with a person, it may feel to them like you're putting limits on the relationship. Actually, your boundaries always existed, and they were there, so it's not creating new limits, but they didn't know about them until we actually shared them with them, right? 
So I'll share another experience I had a few years ago of meeting somebody new. They didn't know me very well, and I didn't know them very well. And um, I was living in the same house, and, you know, it didn't even occur to me to share a, my boundary around personal space with them. And so um, something happened that was uh, really not okay with me, and I got really angry, and I said, this is not okay. You need to get out of here. I was angry, and I couldn't even believe that that just happened, right? And um, what I realized what, was that I hadn't shared my boundary about personal space with this person. And this person had a whole different life experience than I did. You know, it would never occur to me to do that because of my, my boundaries and my life experience. But once I realized that this person had a whole different life experience and that this would have been no big deal to them, then it helped me understand them better. So anger is a normal emotion that can feel uncomfortable and it often occurs when one's personal boundaries are violated. By setting boundaries, though, we can avoid situations like this. So I learned the hard way from this experience how, di a different, how different a person's boundaries can be from mine. <laughs> and that's okay, right? As long as we know, as long as we share and know and get to know one another, then we can respect other people's boundaries and they can respect ours. So... Uh, Another thing <laughs> is if we're expressing our authentic self and sharing our boundaries with someone and it's a problem for them, it may be time to evaluate your boundaries around how willing you are to tolerate people who do not respect your boundaries. Right? <laughs> you may have heard the statement, no is a complete sentence. As we live out loud in the world, it is up to us to honor our boundaries by clarifying them with others. One way is to say no. It is our right. No creates its own boundary. No is a complete sentence that does not require an explanation. We should not feel guilty for saying no. To give what you do not have to give robs yourself and creates resentment. I think it still feels uncomfortable for me to just say no without an explanation. So that's something I need to work on still. <sighs> when we compromise ourselves in order to please someone else, has anybody ever done that? <laughs> or when we give in and say yes to doing something we don't want to do, It is our own authentic self that is disrespected. So here's a really important part, uh, thing to think about, right? In many situations, it's our own self that is the one who is crossing our boundaries. Boy, have I done that a lot. Honoring our own boundaries is an act of self-love that cultivates our authenticity. When we say no to one thing, we are simultaneously saying yes to something else. By clarifying our limits, we are creating a space for us to live out loud. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, wrote in this thing called you on page 60. You rob no person when you discover your own good. You limit no person when you express a greater degree of livingness. You hinder no person's evolution when you consciously enter in the, into the kingdom of your good and possess it today. So how do we figure out what our boundaries are so that we can live as our, our authentic selves without creating landmines for people to step in? One way is through taking time for self-contemplation. We may journal 
or have conversations with others in our life whom we trust, we can get clear about what matters to us and what our boundaries and limits are. We can contemplate what works and doesn't work for us in these different areas of our lives, the physical, mental, emotional, energetic, and material boundaries. So the physical boundaries include things like our bodies and personal space, and what comes to mind for me with this is hugs. Pre-pandemic and years ago, this spiritual community was all about hugs. <laughs> we would walk through the door, give each other hugs, hug each other on the way out, right? And I'm a very affectionate person, and I'm one of those people that loves to give and receive hugs. Well, it took me quite some time to learn to first ask a person if they would like a hug. That was something I had to train myself to do. So if for some reason I give you a hug and I don't ask you first, please remind me. <laughs> Not everybody likes to be hugged <laughs> or hold hands or shake hands. <laughs> we need to learn how to respect our physical boundaries and each other's. Our mental boundaries include things like our own thoughts, ideas, and opinions. We may not want to share everything with everyone, right? We need to take time to learn to know if this is a person that's trustworthy, that we can share our deepest emotional secrets with so that they may not use it against us, right? Our emotions, our feelings and emotions, same thing there. Instead of sharing our deepest, darkest secrets, right, we want to make sure that this person has our best interests at heart. <sighs> Speaking of heart, I think our hearts are so important because this is where love resides. Another word I use for God is love. God is love. So God is here in my heart. God is everywhere present, but I feel God in my heart. My heart is precious. It deserves to be treated with respect and love. And so what I know is that it's exceptionally important for me to take exceptional care of my heart. This little heart of mine has been broken many times. And now what I see is I didn't set boundaries. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, we sing this song in our center called This Little Light of Mine. And that's the tune, so. <laughs> There's also the material boundaries. Material things that we claim as ours to take care of entrusted to our stewardship. This past week, I had the opportunity to share a boundary around something that I feel obligated to take care of. And what was requested was something that totally was something I don't believe in that would be good for this particular thing in a way that I would like to see it taken care of. And so I was avoiding the conversation. <laughs> for days, several days, it felt like, oh no, I don't wanna have to say no, right? <laughs> but you know, so I was like playing with it in my mind, the conversation, what will I say, blah, blah, blah. Then I was putting it off and then I was like, Julia, you're delivering this talk about boundaries, <laughs> sharing our boundaries. Picked up the phone just a couple nights ago and had the conversation. It actually went much better than I expected. And I feel like it created a groundwork for our relationship of a place that we can move forward in getting to know each other better. And that feels really good to me. So I'm so glad I did that. And, you know, it kind of reminds me that a lot of times we think of things that we're avoiding and we're avoiding them because we think they're going to just be so terrible and hard or uncomfortable. But once we do them, they weren't so bad after all. <laughs> so then there's the, um, the energetic boundaries, which include our time and our energy needs, right? Let's get to know ourselves enough to realize when we need downtime or time alone to rest and rejuvenate and recharge our batteries. 
Otherwise, we may end up feeling run down and get sick and maybe not be able to show up on Sunday to deliver the talk and have to get zoomed onto the wall <laughs> instead of being able to share a, uh, show up in person. Ann Taylor, a New Zealand author, wrote, love yourself enough to set boundaries. Your time and energy are precious. You get to choose how you use it, and you teach people how to treat you by deciding what you will and won't accept. Then there are our spiritual boundaries, and that's something that you require for your own spiritual well-being. I can share what I do as a daily spiritual practice every morning when I get up, start my day that way, with prayer and meditation. I also love time to commune with nature and practicing mindfulness throughout the day. As, I go, as I'm going through my day, I'm mindful of how am I feeling, and I ask myself, how are you feeling? What do you need? These are internal thoughts I have going on in my mind throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, I have a gratitude practice where I'm grateful for all my blessings before I go to sleep. So here's some questions to think about. Are there areas in your life that you are aware of when you need to set limits? What I've most needed to work on in my life is the work-life balance. There's many times in the past where mm, I would say I had an unhealthy work ethic, that I worked too hard, too long. I would go all day without eating. One time, I was so dehydrated, I felt my body starting to shut down. It was just an unhealthy habit that I've gotten into, that I had gotten into, right? And it kind of goes along with this um, this culture that I was raised in of being of service. We know being of service is a good thing, right? But no one ever taught me how to say no. I had to learn how to say no myself, and I learned it the hard way. In fact, um, because I didn't know how to say no, I had a big challenge around my calendar and scheduling, and I would schedule way too many things and get too many things on my plate, and then I couldn't actually fulfill the obligations to the people I had said that I would do things for. So one time, uh, I don't know, maybe five years ago, I was about to have a meltdown because I had too many things on my, on my plate. And I have a dear supporter in my life who happens to be here today, <laughs> who I reached out to for support. And we sat down with my calendar, and we just started taking things off my calendar or rescheduling them, right? I mean, it was a, uh, it was a cr uh, I was about to be in crisis just from not knowing how to say no. So it's important to, to reach out to others for support if we need it, right? It's great to be in community because we do have people that we can reach out to. Are there areas where you feel that others have more control of your time or energy than you do? What ways can you draw or redefine a clear boundary in those areas for yourself? What might be possible if you were to communicate your boundaries in a mindful way to a friend family member, or colleague? What can you say to start that conversation? One thing that may be helpful is to sit down and take some time to write out what you could say and practice saying it out loud a few times until it feels comfortable. So just as individuals have boundaries, communi communities and organizations have boundaries too. Examining the values, mission, and purpose of the group can clarify what is important and invite discussions to see if there's anything that needs to be released. We as a community may revisit these things while going through our visioning process to learn what spirit's highest idea as the Sierra Center for Spiritual Living is now. In spiritual communities, it can become a common practice to put the organization above the individual's needs. So in our spiritual community, we want to create a culture of honoring people's needs and, and honoring their boundaries so that 
when they're being of service, they don't get burnout because that's not good for them or the organization, right? So there's, in Wikipedia, it says there's a couple of ways of creating boundaries. One is called unilateral boundaries. This is when one person decides to impose a standard on the relationship, regardless of whether others support it or not. For example, one person may decide to never mention an unwanted subject and to make a habit of leaving the room, ending phone calls, not answering messages, deleting them, or not replying if the subject is mentioned by others. Well, that's one way to do it, but I'm going to invite us to do it the second way, and that's called collaborative boundaries, where everyone in the relationship group agrees that a particular standard should be upheld. For example, the group may decide not to discuss an unwanted subject, and then all members individually avoid mentioning it and work together to change the subject if someone mentions it. It reminds me of some families, how they don't talk about politics or religion, right? So in our community, we've come up with a uh, respectful community communication agreement. And I posted it right on that wall. It's the green agreement right on the wall there before the table, right? So please take some time to revisit that because we'll be talking about that a lot as we begin our community journey of, of visioning for our Sierra Center. So as we come to the end of today's talk, here's a, another quote from Brene Brown, her book, Rising Strong, The Reckoning, The Rumble, The Revolution. Compassionate people ask for what they need. They say no when they need to. And when they say yes, they mean it. They're compassionate because their boundaries keep them out of resentment. So in closing, I want to remind us once we know our boundaries, it is an act of love to share them with others. It invites them to understand us better, and it communicates the way to our heart. When boundaries do get crossed, we can then have heart-to-heart -heart conversations of reconciliation. Cultivating authenticity is a practice. We start right now where we are today to forgive ourselves and forgive others for being imperfectly imperfect, <laughs> for being perfectly imperfect. <laughs> we can begin again to be brave and clarify, this is what I will or will not do. This is what I will or will not accept or tolerate. By loving ourselves and others in this way, we will build bridges of connection. This is an act of living out loud. And so it is. Amen. Amen.